What you're looking at are, are some steel sculptures that um, we collaborated on. We built these structures um, as representations of um, data from Klaus Schulten's lab at the Beckman Institute. It's, uh, the, the data was the folding of a protein called villain, and the protein folds in, in seven microseconds. So, I mean, it's thousands and thousands of times faster than the blink of an eye. And what we did was we took five snapshots along that trajectory, and with those coordinates, fed it into a program that would give us cutting diagrams for, for steel. And then really over the course of a month, students got to learn about protein folding, some pretty difficult biochemical research problems, while at the same time welding and grinding and creating the art. The sculptures show wonderfully how this protein is first very elongated, artificially elongated actually, and how it then coils up into the characteristic shape that the protein assumes. Proteins are amazingly beautiful structures. They make us run. They're everything. It's like the, 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 the basic blocks of, of what we call being alive. They have a, the, a beauty of, of alien technology to me. It's, it's, a, it's a world that is perfect and, and, and I just I'm amazed by how little we know visually about about that kind of world. In the domain of living cells, which is uh, at the molecular domain, in this size, scale, uh, it is just difficult for our mi microscopes to visualize uh, things. Uh, with light microscopes, uh, you don't have the resolution, and electron microscopes are not really well suited for studying the processes in living cells. When a protein is produced, you can kind of think of it as starting out as this floppy string of beads, and then it folds into a final structure. The string of beads, each bead is an amino acid. There's 20 of these things. And the amazing thing about proteins is that they perform all kinds of different tasks. And the task that they perform is dependent on the, the shape that they take. And the shape that they take is dependent on the sequence of beads. The protein in the cell have a remarkable ability to find their proper form. This is very essential for them carrying out the proper function and it is also very essential for avoiding uh, pathological circumstances like Alzheimer and other central nervous system diseases often come about from the proteins to actually misfold, not to assume the proper form. And really one of the, the great unsolved problems in the, the area of biochemistry is the protein folding problem. That's what the, the, one of the things the Schulden's lab is working on, right? Can we, with a computer, watch a protein fold trilli trillionth of a second by trillionth of a second uh, and, and actually from that get a movie of what it might look like as that structure forms? I uh, built over the years what I like to call a computational microscope. That is uh, a microscope not made of glass lenses and metal tubes, but rather made of concepts and ideas from physics and chemistry and mathematics and uh, made of software and computers that put those ideas and concepts together to simulate what is happening in the cell. Villain headpiece is a particularly small protein that folds also fast enough that the computer can just manage to follow its uh, Burst from being a stretched out, completely nascent protein to a protein that is then functional after the villain has uh, folded itself into the proper form. It's one of the proteins, one of the few proteins that with the state of our computers today, we can uh, accurately predict its folding trajectory from unfolded to folded all the way, right? For proteins that are, are, are slower than villain, we don't have the computing power to do it and I wanted the whole story. So I published the work and I told the world about it in many lectures. And so it happened that uh, some uh, artist scientists uh, became aware of it. Klaus Schulten's work is, is I know it really well because I've, I'm always interested in, in seeing the, 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 what's beyond the static aspect of a protein structure. For the last decades, people saw only the static 
aspect. They see only a protein as something unmovable. But it turns out the, the moving aspect of a, the dynamics of a protein is, is absolutely crucial. And, and his group does an amazing job in, in visualizing that. I was out there looking for resources that would help me teach concepts of protein folding. In particular, I was looking for something that showed motion. And these supplementary videos that they published really struck me as being um, very powerful for communicating the idea that there are multiple paths to a single native state. You could see these proteins getting stuck in local minima and getting out of it. And, and you could visually, you could watch these things go through different paths to the same final structure. Many people who see for the first time what we actually uh, offer scientifically, they think, oh, we are just using beautiful colors and, uh, and uh, Disney-type movies. But uh, that is true in a way, but it's also much more than that, because this is the only way actually of uh, grasping with the human mind the kind of complexity that is natural to the living cell. What I really love to do is, is to walk around these things up there. You look at them from one direction and, and you see a timeline. You see that protein folding. You go to the other end, you see it unfolding. And as you walk around, you get a better sense, I think, than you would from a two-dimensional still of, of the space that helices take up, of the, the proximity of one backbone to the next. You get a better picture of a protein. It certainly provokes people to ask, and if they hear the answer that this is actually representing something and it's not a modernist abstract sculpture, most people are actually quite intrigued by that and start asking more questions and wonder about their own bodies. It's way beyond making pretty sculptures for the public and getting people to think that science is cool. It's way beyond that. You can see things um, through art that maybe you would have let slip past. When you see dead objects under the microscope, you are impressed with the static beauty. But uh, when you see a cell, you are impressed with the liveliness of it. You see things streaming and moving and uh, bubbling and uh, sculpting. And uh, so uh, that is uh, life and uh, that's what we want to show the world. And uh, art is an absolutely natural way of uh, bringing about the message.